This video is brought to you courtesy of a brand new sponsor, and that is the free-to-play multiplayer game Enlisted. If you're a gamer, you know that historical shooters have come back in vogue in the last four or five years, and Enlisted, which was launched in 2021, is quickly becoming one of the most popular games in the space. It has a strong focus on historical accuracy while still keeping gameplay dynamic and fast-paced. Personally, I like games where they build the mechanics around history, and that's exactly what Enlisted does. You can play distinct historical campaigns, like the Invasion of Normandy or the Battle of Moscow. Each campaign has unique maps, troops, weapons, and all kinds of various historic details you can unlock and play in. Enlisted has a lot of elements from other shooters that you probably enjoy, like large-scale combat zones with vehicles and specialized weapons, but it also has some cool elements that are totally unique, like the ability to construct fortifications to assist your team in real time on the battlefield. And naturally, there's full customization of your soldiers so that you can take your preferred style of fighter into battle. Enlisted is available on PC as well as both Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, as well as Xbox One and PS. PS4. And everything will be fully optimized for cross platforms, so there's lots of ways to join the battle. And remember, free to play. Head to enlisted.link forward slash top tens enlisted to get started. And as a special treat for you guys, following that link in the description box below will give you three days of premium play for free, plus several orders for troops and weapons. Very cool. Go check out Enlisted today and now today's video. Urban legends, at least as far as that term has been used to describe them, are relatively new. The name dates back to the 60s, and though they come in many different styles and genres, the basic idea is the same. It's a story told as though it were true. Often the details are changed to make it sound more personal. It happens in town or nearby. It involves people you know or may have heard of, but in general, the idea is that it is truly a legend or a myth, a story meant to shock or horrify in some way. But not true. It's never true. Except in those rare occasions, when it is. Number 10. People scatter ashes at Disneyland all the time. When someone dies and is cremated, deciding on what to do with the ashes is often a big deal for many people. This is the final remains of someone who you cared for in life. So what do you do? Sometimes the deceased will have made their wishes clear, and at other times it's up to the bereaved to make a judgment call. And according to urban legends, many of the dearly departed want their last hurrah to be at Disneyland. Since before 2010, the story has made the rounds about people regularly scattering ashes both at Disneyland and Disney World. And while this might not be a big deal at many tourist sites like the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls, Disney is a theme park. It's an enclosed area full of families. You probably don't want to breathe in your granddad. So surely this is just a legend, right? Just a horrible tale of misguided souls bidding farewell to a loved one in a bit of a thoughtless fashion. Well, not so much. Turns out people really do scatter ashes at the Magic Kingdom with baffling regularity. Pre-pandemic, it was happening at a rate of about once per month. It happens so often that there's a code that Disney employees use to alert others to the problem. So, if you ever hear anyone at Disneyland refer to a HEPA cleanup, you know to watch out for dust clouds. Weirdly enough, although ashes are tossed everywhere, the most frequent spot is the Haunted Mansion. Number 9. Charlie No Face The name Charlie No Face certainly evokes the proper imagery for an urban legend right up there with Slender Man and the Jersey Devil. But unlike those two, Charlie No Face, sometimes called the Green Man, was not a story concocted to make people afraid. He was a real guy and his name was Ray Robinson. But it was true that he didn't really have a face. According to legends, Charlie No Face was a monstrous figure that walked the streets near Pittsburgh late at night. He had no eyes, nose, or lips, and his skin glowed an eerie green. In reality, Ray Robinson was eight years old when he made the tragic mistake of climbing a tree and touching an active power line. The resulting electrocution burned him so badly that he lost most of his face to burns, but he did survive. Ray grew up blind, but well aware that his appearance would be considered horrifying to many. He chose to only leave the house under the cover of night as a result. Maybe not so much to spare others, but to spare himself from having to deal with people questioning him. But it ended up giving rise to the legend of Charlie No-Face, born from the imaginations of people who made snap judgments after simply seeing someone who didn't fit the mold of what we expect when we see other people. As the story spread, many people would drive the highways at night in the hopes of finding Ray. Some did so with kind intentions and shared a drink or took a photo. But others abused him, attacking or humiliating him. Many people grew to actually enjoy Ray's company and valued their meetings with him, as he was always kind and willing to talk and share time with anyone, even if most people sought him out as something of a joke or a dare at first. Number 8. The Puebla Tunnels The Mexican city of Puebla dates back to 1531, so there's a lot of history there. In modern times, an often told story detailed how Puebla had a secret underground world. Dating back almost to the origin of the city itself and the preceding couple of centuries, a network of tunnels was supposedly 
completely dug out. That was the story anyway, but they existed on no maps and no one had ever found actual evidence of them. It was just one of those stories that everyone seemed to know. In 2014, the story took a sharp right turn when a construction crew actually discovered one of the tunnels. Then, upon further exploring, a lot more were found. They were able to map out an extensive network that's believed was designed to connect major structures from the city's origin. One of the first cities built during the Spanish colonial era, Pueblo was very important to the Catholic Church. The tunnels, it's believed, connected buildings owned by the church so that treasure or people could be moved secretly between locations. They were also used during wartime to move troops and munitions as well as staging attacks. Upwards of 10 kilometers of tunnels exist, and they're well constructed. They've handled at least 500 years of construction and earthquakes and are large enough for a man to ride through on horseback. Number 7. The E.T. Dump One of the greatest and most infamous tech urban legends of all time dealt with what was arguably one of the worst video games ever made, E.T. for the Atari 2600. If you've never played it, it's hard to appreciate just how terrible the game was. Even with the primitive gameplay and graphics the Atari was packing, the game was pure nonsense. Pixelated E.T. was trying to assemble a phone and escape the FBI. You'd enter a screen and then enter another nearly identical screen and maybe fall down a hole to another identical screen. Over and over again. The game was a critical and commercial failure. It was developed in just six weeks, and after the initial sales boom from excited fans, the bottom fell out when everyone realized the game was trash. And what do you do with trash? Well, you dump it. That was the legend anyway. According to the story, thousands, if not millions, of unsold copies were secretly taken to the desert to be buried and forgotten. It was so perfectly preposterous that there was no way that it could be true. After years of speculation, in 2014, permission was finally given for a team to excavate the alleged dump site. Turns out, the rumors were true, and there was a bonanza of crushed old Atari systems and games, chief among them unsold copies of E.T. that fans had hated so badly 30 years earlier. Number 6. The Bunny Man If you live in or around Fairfax, Virginia, then you know the tale of the Bunny Man. He's the local bogeyman people need to be on the lookout for, especially near a bridge on Colchester Road. According to legend, there was once an insane asylum in the area that closed down. The patients were moved, but one busload of them crashed. Most of the patients were rounded up again, but one got away. The only sign of him that was found was a group of gutted and partially eaten rabbits hanging from a bridge. The patient was never found. Months later, on Halloween, some local teens headed out to the bridge to hang out. The next day, they're found gutted and hanging from the bridge, thus beginning the Bunny Man's reign of terror. Every Halloween, if you head to the bridge, you risk running into him. There are lots of holes in this story, not the least of which is that there was never an asylum in the area. But there was a story of a couple in a car who were attacked by a man with something on his head who threw a hatchet at them. The papers turned the something on his head into bunny ears, and the story grew from there. A deranged man dressed like a rabbit who had escaped from an asylum and was stringing people up didn't take long to grow out of the initial story, and the rest is history. Number 5. The Pool Guy Not every urban legend deals with murder and mayhem. Some are just uncomfortable and kind of gross. Like the infamous story of the guy in the pool that everyone has probably heard some version of at one time or another. According to this tale, rescue workers had come to save a guy who got stuck. So how did a guy get stuck in a swimming pool? Well, it wasn't the whole guy, it was just a sensitive part of his anatomy that got stuck in a suction filter. As foolish as this sounds, it really happened to a man back in 1994. He was found by police in Scotland with his pants down and his business firmly lodged in place. He was taken to hospital to deal with injuries sustained and will forever have to live with the knowledge that he was the guy in the story that everyone knows and laughs about. Number 4. Coca-Cola Spermicide The history of birth control is quite interesting and dates back much further than you'd think. The ancient Egyptians would form a pessary, you could consider it an equivalent to a modern diaphragm, that was inserted to block the passage of sperm into the cervix. Only their version was made from things like crocodile dung. One of the most interesting aspects of the history of birth control is the history of attempted birth birth control. People have tried some wild and crazy things over the years, and one of the most infamous took root in urban legend form. Women, starting around the 1950s, were using Coca-Cola as a spermicide. The story is as simple as it is bizarre. A woman, not wanting to get pregnant after intercourse, would simply take a bottle of Coca-Cola and clean herself out. The idea was that the acid in the Coke would kill any sperm. The story has existed for decades and often follows the familiar friend-of-a-friend pattern of travel. And it would be a hard one to prove if not for medical science 
science. Research into the idea began back in the 1980s, when a Harvard researcher heard of the supposed method for the first time. One of her mad students said that students in her school in Puerto Rico had done it, and as it happens, there's even a song from the 1960s about it. A series of tests proved that Diet Coke was a better spermicide than New Coke, but that No Coke would likely be a good spermicide at all, considering how impregnation works, and the fact that you would never get the beverage where it needs to be, deep enough or fast enough. But the urban legend isn't necessarily that it works, just that people tried it, and, well, that much seems to be true. Number 3. Body Under the Bed One of the most well-known urban legends is also one of the most terrifying. A family checks into a hotel room. Exhausted, they hit the sack and sleep the whole night through. By the next morning, they're noticing a weird smell in the hotel room. They search around and find nothing until someone gets the bright idea to look under the bed. The source of the smell is quickly discovered. It's the decomposing corpse of a previous guest. We've all had bad experiences in a hotel, but a corpse under the bed is next level. Hotels are notorious for not cleaning as well as they should, but how do you miss a whole body? Well, it happens, as in it's happened more than once. It doesn't happen often enough that you need to check under the bed every time you check into a hotel, but if you notice a smell, it wouldn't hurt to look there. Number two, snuff films. Few urban legends have been so horrifying to the public consciousness as the idea of snuff films. The idea of these films, which are alleged to show a real murder that has been filmed, date back to the 1970s. The FBI has investigated several actual movies over the years that depicted death so realistic people thought that they'd seen a real human die, and then they just it's nothing but fiction. Several infamous films like Cannibal Holocaust or Guinea Pig have garnered attention, with actor Charlie Sheen even alerting authorities to the latter in 1991. The producers had to demonstrate how they made the special effects in the films to prove their innocence. To this day, you'll find most websites claiming that no snuff film has ever been proven to be real and they're just urban legends. That's not true. There has been a snuff film, and it was also fairly recent. In 2012, Luca Magnotta murdered Jun Lin in Montreal, Canada. It was an incredibly gruesome crime involving dismemberment, cannibalism, and necrophilia. And Magnotta filmed it all, and he put it on the internet. A nearly 11-minute video of the murder entitled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded to a gore website. It showed the victim being stabbed repeatedly and dismembered. It was set to music, and he posted teasers online several days before the murder even took place. The victim's hands and feet were mailed to different locations around Ottawa, Ontario, and as far as the West Coast, where they'd been sent to elementary schools. The killer was later convicted of first-degree murder. Number 1. Organ Theft The organ theft urban legend is so popular, it's made its way into movies. The idea of black market organs is something most people have heard of, and yet for some reason, the concept of an organ theft is still considered to be an urban legend. This stems in part from the way it's described in urban legends, which involves someone, often a tourist, getting drugged and waking up in a tub of ice with a hastily stitched wound in their side and a missing kidney. For many years, authorities insisted these were nothing but urban legends, and no one has ever awoken in a tub of ice in this condition. That said, authorities were later forced to acknowledge a disturbing trend in China, which led to far more donated organs than organ donors. In 2009, a panel of experts determined that China was very likely murdering members of the Falun Gong religious movement and other political prisoners and then harvesting their organs. So no one gets to wake up in a tub of ice here. They're being murdered outright and losing all of their organs. Falun Gong members started being persecuted in China around 1999. This coincides with a dramatic spike in organ transplant in 1998, China performed 3,596 kidney transplants. A year later, there were over 10,000, and they seem to have remained at that rate. China says they harvest organs from officially executed prisoners, except their own records indicate that they don't execute that many prisoners, and even if they did, how would they match so many organs to those in need? Allegedly, they have a second unofficial source of organs, and a lot of people agree that it's organ harvesting. Thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can go to enlisted.link forward slash top tens enlisted to start playing their free MMO shooter with three free days of premium play and some bonus troops and weapons. Go check them out and thank you for watching.